Okay, honestly, I'm filming in my backyard. And I'm like nervous, like I have social anxiety and there's not even people here, but it's cause I have like neighbors like right here, like their backyards are like connected to mine and I'm like nervous someone's gonna hear me talking about my problems. I kinda just wanted to talk about my mental health and you know, the struggle of uh, comparing myself and kind of just making myself feel like shit all the time. Um, I think a big thing is YouTube. Like, it's honestly hard to be a YouTuber. I was watching um, Gabby Hanna. She made a video called like, the truth about like what social media does to, like your mind or some shit. And she was talking about how like the amount of like followers you have and the likes and the views and everything is literally like a statistic that shows like how much you are worth today as opposed to like a week ago. And in comparison to like your friends that also do YouTube or like whatever. And like it really sucks. Um, and I think that you can try really hard to look past that, but it's like so difficult. Um, for example, when I remember I had like 10,000 followers on my ASMR channel and there was this girl who would like comment on my videos named Busy B ASMR and I was like, oh, who is this girl? So I went and clicked on her channel. She had like 2,000 followers and she was just like this cute blonde girl and I liked her videos. We kind of became like friends. And so, um, she continued to grow and I was like really happy for her and I had like a bunch more followers than her and I was like, oh, I'm ahead of her. Like, I'm good. I'm chilling, whatever. Um, and you don't like mean to compare yourself, but you do. And I'm kind of the type of person, like I like to help the people that are like smaller than me. I like to comment on people's videos that are like smaller, um, YouTubers and stuff like that. And uh, fast forward to now, um, it's been about like two years, <laughs> which is kind of crazy, maybe a, like a year and a half. And I have 40,000 followers on my ASMR channel and she has like 130,000 or something crazy. And like, that's my goal, you know, like I want to get 100,000 so bad. That was like my goal since I started YouTube. I was like, I just want to break 100,000. I want to get my plaque or whatever. And it's hard to see these people that were once smaller than you, like blow past you. And it's like, what am I doing wrong? Like, is my voice not relaxing? Do I have stupid ideas? Am I not cute enough? You know, like so many things go through your head, whether you like it or not. And it's like subconsciously, you just compare yourself. Another one was relaxing male ASMR. I found him, I think when he had like 1000 followers and I started commenting on his videos. We became like friends. We still are friends, like we still talk, but <clears throat> he's like a very handsome guy. And I think that like gays, <laughs> like a lot of gay guys watch ASMR. I don't know why. Um, and they like saw him and he's like so good looking, you know? And so they like watch his videos, his thumbnails are good. His, his whisper's great. He knows a lot about audio, like his uh, quality is really good. And he totally blew past me. I remember when he passed me and now I think he's almost has twice as many subscribers as me. And it sucks. <laughs> like, I'm happy for them. Like, I think it's so awesome. Like, I think that they deserve all the success. I think the fact that they were able to, you know, build their channels from nothing to like so big, it's awesome. Um, and that's something that I like really respect YouTubers for. But at the same time, it's like, how much of it is like luck? That's what I wonder is like, how much of it is the YouTube algorithm? Cause like I've talked to Tom, relaxing male ASMR. And he's like, I literally don't know like why, like, I don't know. Oh my gosh. And there was this time that he made, okay. One of his videos that like blew up was like a husband video. It was like husband sleeps with you, whatever. And it, I think it has like half a million views. Maybe it has more now. I don't know. And um, he was like, dude, you got to try this. You got to make a husband video. And he's like, you'll get so many views, whatever. And I was like, okay, sick. And so I made one. And 
mine only got like 30,000 views, which is pretty good for my channel, actually. That's like good for my channel. But it wasn't like half a million views, you know what I mean? It's like, if I do the same concept, same like camera angle, same tags, like s similar title, it's like, what really makes that big of a difference from his video to mine? Is it the content in the video? Is it like the watch time? Is it like he's better looking than me or some shit? Like, I don't know. It's so weird. And there's, you really just don't know with YouTube. That's what sucks. Sorry, I'm like kind of sweating. It's hot outside, but I wanted to film out here because I don't like when people can hear me talking. Like, I don't like when Rizvan can hear me talking like to my camera, you know what I mean? Um, but yeah, it really sucks. And like, I go on Twitter and it, it seems like all the ASMR artists are friends and like I don't know I feel like kind of excluded almost and I'm not like complaining or anything like I don't really care but like it'd be cool if like ASMR artists tried to talk to me and stuff like sometimes they do I guess there's quite a few that follow me but like I'm not friends with them and it seems like they're all friends like yesterday I went on Twitter and I was like Oh, there's like 10 ASMR artists that are all going to be streaming some new video game and they're going to be like on the same team and like whatever. And like, I never get invited to those things. And I'm like, is it because I don't have enough followers? Is it because I'm like depressed? <laughs> like my videos are different. I don't know. I feel like I've been doing like different videos lately and I've been proud of them. Like I'll do videos, like I posted one yesterday and I was like, ASMR just reacts to ASMR cringe, like, or ASMR just reacts to ASMR TikToks, or playing ASMR video games, like, stuff that I've never seen, and, like, I, every time I make those videos, I'm like, oh my god, this is such an awesome idea, I hope it gets views, like, nobody else has done this, and I've, you know, like, seeing, I, I used to watch a lot of, like, James Charles and shit, just because I think his story is actually pretty interesting, like, he came from nothing, he had, like, a shitty old YouTube channel with like not many subscribers and now he has like 20 million or something crazy and he was like you just have to find something you know that nobody else is doing and like run with it or whatever and so every time I make these videos that nobody else has done that I've ever seen I'm like oh my god this is gonna be dope and then I post it and like it doesn't do very well and I'm like is it because it's like too different is it not relaxing enough and I don't know if part of it's like because I'm an ASM artist and like triggers and stuff they get boring to do honestly like tapping for an hour on a piece of wood like it gets boring and I guess I don't feel like super fulfilled doing that and I like doing the other shit I like doing the reaction videos and like gaming videos are fun and like whatever um but yeah you just compare yourself and I see all these like new asm artists that come out and they're they blow up so fast oh my god like and it makes you kind of feel like shit maybe it's just me i'm like a pisces i'm like sensitive and emotional and like i fucking compare the shit out of myself to everyone but like even just today today i found <clears throat> this guy's youtube channel and he had like eleven thousand followers he was an asm artist and i uh, clicked on his channel and he only had like four videos and they all had like 30,000 views 20,000 views which is like so good like it took me a while to even have a video that broke a thousand views and I was like so happy and it seems like there's people that do like nothing and they get views it's weird and there's people click on like weird stuff like I've seen video, there's like this old guy, I think his name's like Morpheus ASMR. He's like this old guy that does like mukbangs or something. And he has so many followers, his videos get like millions of views. And I think it's just interesting because it's like an old man, you know? Or I've seen like little kids do ASMR and it's not even that great. Like they just film it on their phone, but it gets so many views. I'm like, it really is so interesting to me. Like. YouTube isn't based off of, it's really not like based off the work you put into it. Um, you could film like the most high quality video, um, 
you can have like all the best equipment but if it's not something people want to watch for whatever reason it won't do well doesn't matter how much work or time you put into it like I've put hours of work into certain videos and they don't do well at all I think one of my like hardest videos was it was like a bachelor video like bachelor sends you home roleplay I thought that was like such a funny idea and I literally think it only got like 5,000 views and it took me like hours and then my most viewed video the stupid fucking moaning video <laughs> I think it has 700,000 views now and I'm like I literally sat on my bed and went for like 15 minutes and then looped it for an hour boom i was like it was so easy <laughs> um but at the same time it's so difficult because you don't know what type of things are going to be successful and it just sucks and i just i think social media just kind of fucks with everyone's mental health um i saw this thing on netflix the other day it was like a uh, documentary type thing it was called the social dilemma talking about how like social media and like facebook um like they can basically like control people and their emotions um without them knowing which sounds weird but like your phones and shit literally could control your emotions like so hard and so i've been wanting to like take breaks from my phone and like have times in the day where I just like don't use my phone because I think it's not good for your mental health. Um, like, yeah, it's awesome. We have so many like cool things that we can do with our phones now, like Apple Pay and shit where you just like scan your phone or like FaceTime people across the world. But it's also like fucking terrible. It's so addicting. You constantly have it on you. When you're bored, you get on your phone. Like I've realized how reliant I am on my phone. Um, even like this morning, like I constantly am like watching or listening to something on my phone. Like I spent hours on YouTube or Spotify, mostly YouTube. And like today, this morning, I was like gonna brush my teeth or like get dressed or something. And I was like, oh, I need my phone. I need to like listen to something because to like entertain myself while I'm like brushing my teeth and getting ready. But then I'm like, why am I so reliant on it? Like I don't need to have it. It's just because like, I don't know, I think our attention spans are so fucking short now. We're just so used to getting things quick. We got like Amazon delivering in a day. We got the internet. We don't have to mail letters anymore. It's like emails, text messages, video calls. Like, like everyone's mental health is, I feel like we just, our minds are not meant to be like. <laughs> My dog is so weird. He pushes his bowl around on the ground, like around the house and eats it. Um, but yeah, I feel like our brains just aren't meant for this shit. Like, I don't know. It's weird. And I feel like it's almost looked down upon when people, like, say they want to take a break from their phones and stuff. Um, like, I've seen posts of people saying, like, we don't care about, like, your social media fast or whatever. Like, people that want to, like, take breaks from their social medias and shit. Um... I don't know it's kind of just depressing and like i've been watching like caitlin bennett videos <laughs> people get mad at me i've had people dm me saying why do you support a racist and a homophobic girl or whatever like if you don't know she's like a political youtuber and she goes around like interviews people and i don't really like support her i just think it's entertaining to watch um but people hate her and so she'll go to like colleges on campus and like interview people and crowds of people will form and you see everyone just on their phone and she tries to interview people and it's like half the time they're just like sitting on their phone trying to like avoid the contact because they're either nervous or like embarrassed it's weird i don't know how to explain it it just like really bothers me and then everybody's filming her everybody's like trying to get in her face with their cameras trying to like embarrass her and like I don't know, like, who knows, maybe she deserves it sometimes, sometimes, I don't think, I think everyone deserves to be treated, like, humanely at least, but, um, it's just kind of messed up to me, like, phones, just everyone fucking has one, 
What would we do if we didn't have phones now? Say that everybody had their phone taken away, like, I wonder what the world would be like. I saw a video, and it was like, how life was in the 90s versus how it is now, and it was like, parent, it was like a family, they had like a kid, and they were like at a park, and the mom and dad were like playing with their daughter, like on the swings or whatever. And then it shows like, in 2020, and it's like the kids swinging by herself, and the parents were just like on the bench, like sitting on their phones, like waiting for their kid to like be done or whatever. I just like hate that. Like, I miss when I was a kid, and I I never was able to like text my friends like if they could hang out. I remember like walking to my friend's house, ringing the doorbell, asking their parents if they were there and if they could play. <laughs> you know, like kids these days don't have to do that. They all just text and like. I remember like wanting a phone so bad like my parents didn't let me have a phone for so long and I'm glad I have my phone but it's like you just kind of learn to control yourself I think you can sit on that thing for all fucking day there's so many things to watch so many things to read so many things to play it's fucking whack um, and I don't know I've just been feeling kind of like a failure I guess um in terms of like YouTube because that's all I'm doing right now all I'm doing is YouTube and I've, I've talked to Rizvan my boyfriend um and I was like maybe I should get a job um and he's like no I don't want you to because it's like the pandemic and all this crazy shit he's like I support you just doing YouTube and whatever and so now that I'm doing it full time it's like okay I really gotta like go hard it's all I, it's all I'm doing. I gotta like come up with some dope shit. And it just feels like more pressure, I guess. Feels like, oh crap, like now that I'm doing this full time, I gotta make more money. I gotta make more videos. I gotta make it better. I have so much time now, you know? Um, but at the same time, feels like it's just stagnant. It feels like it's just the same as it has been, even when I had a job. And it sucks. Um, it makes me feel like nervous. I'm like, maybe I'll never get my channel to be what I want it to be. Maybe it'll never grow to the size I would like it to. Maybe I'll never be able to make enough money to like just support myself and you know, help out Rizvan with the bills enough. I don't know. So it sucks. And what else? Oh, yeah. I don't know. Being, a, I feel like when you just become a YouTuber, basically just signing up to have a bunch of mental health issues <laughs> um it's just so many things that come with being a youtuber and starting a channel and like wanting to be successful and having a successful channel and you know you do research and well that's the thing is like i feel like people that some people just start it they get lucky and they fucking blow up they make money and they just like don't even have to try but then there's people like me on the other hand who like I I never like started YouTube to like be YouTube famous like I really don't give a shit about fame or followers or anything but to like make more money and stuff like I wanted to make money on YouTube that was a goal of mine like I would like to make money doing something I love and I love making videos and like talking on camera and shit and so I like would do research and you know like research the algorithm and how to get your videos like ranked higher in the search bar and all this shit and like look where I am and there's people that I'm sure don't even do that and they're so far past me you know it's, it sucks it sucks with YouTube um, and being your own boss is hard too it's hard to motivate yourself sometimes you know when you have a regular ass job you have to be there by a certain time. You have a boss that basically holds your job in their hands. And you know, 
you're kind of reliant on them to, you know, make you feel, you kind of feel like you have to, uh, you know, go to work and do all these things or you could lose your job, you're gonna lose your money and you need your money, you know? So like, you're, that's like your motivation. When you're working for yourself from home, doing YouTube, your own fucking boss, making your own shit, it's hard. Like, you don't have anyone telling you what to do. There's no guidance. Um, you're just trying to do your best make the best content you can, hope for the best. It's like you're literally just going off like hope. <laughs> um, it's scary, like, there is no one, no one on YouTube that YouTube, like, or Google emails you or anything, like, what to do or, you know, like, what the goal should be for this week or, like, whatever. You know what I mean? You just gotta do it all yourself and fucking hope for the best. And it's hard. Um, but anyway, I am happy doing what I'm doing. Like, I do love YouTube, but, you know, I don't make much. I don't make much, but I'm grateful for what I have. And I'm glad that I'm able to do it full-time right now. I don't know if I will be doing this full-time forever. If I could get it off the ground more, fuck yeah, like, I'm down. But who knows? I've thought about, I've like looked into other jobs, um, like working at like a tattoo shop, that would be fun. I would actually, I would love that. Um, not to be a tattoo artist, but to like, be just like a receptionist and chill. Like my friend does it in Idaho where I got like my tattoos done. She loves it. She said it's so fun and like, all she does is hand people this paper to sign in and like the questionnaire thing or whatever it's called. And then she like checks them out when they're done with their tattoos. They just pay and they leave. And like she just hangs out with the people. And it just seems fun. <laughs> so like I've been thinking about doing that. Um, anyway, that's hot. Thanks for coming to my TED talk. Sorry, it was such a ramble. Sorry if I sound weird. Like I honestly have anxiety just like when I think people can hear me, like I, I get quiet, I'm not myself fucking working on it <laughs> but yeah anyway I'll talk to you guys later um have a good day hope you guys are staying safe